Mariners lose four to three. They fall to two and five on the year. They lose the series to the Angels. That makes back to back series loss to start the year. Let's talk about how it happened, shall we? I mean, we don't have to, but we're going to. Uh, Mariners once again get off to a one nothing lead as Luis Suarez singles to right to score a run. We're going to talk a lot about the first inning. Probably a lot, lot about the first inning. So that gives them a one nothing lead. They do not score again. And hint, that will be a big part of what we're going to talk about. Logan O'Hoppy, and who I've been calling Logan O'Hop, sorry, buddy, uh, crushes a two-run home run off of Chris Flexen. Makes it 2-1 in the second inning. Nothing happens for a very long time. But in the seventh inning, Mike Trout and Shohei Otani both single to score runs with Andres Munoz on the mound. Combined exit velocity of those two hits was 137 miles per hour. Actually, might have been 136, rounding down, whatever. It was not hit hard, but they both score runs. After Diego Castillo stinks again, Ty France does double in a run in the seventh, and Eugenio Suarez singles in a run to make it 4-3. The Mariners are not able to score again, and so they lose the series. All right, let's talk about positives, because there's a few. There are usually a few. I thought Chris Flexen pitched pretty well. I thought that he was far from dominant, but you know what? It's Chris Flexen. He's never going to be dominant. I thought he got enough swinging strikes to feel pretty solid. Command wasn't great. 51 of 90, 57 of 91 pitches landing in the strike zone and did issue two walks, but I thought he settled in pretty nicely. Handled a pretty good, not great, Los Angeles lineup with two great options at the top, or near the top anyway. I thought he pitched pretty well. Matt Brash battled through some command stuff. You saw the risk that Brash offers, but also the reward. He did walk a couple of uh, positives on the offensive side. Uh, Eugenio Suarez continues to hit well. He has a couple more RBI, two hits. Uh, Julio only reaches the one time, but does score a run. Uh, J.P. Crawford hits a couple of balls hard. That's nice to see. We'll talk about him in a little bit as well. Jared Kelnick does get a single, but then pitch hit for Pretty much the end of the positives in that regard. Let's talk about some negatives. And the biggest negative here was that first inning because Shohei Otani was pitching today and he did not have his command early on. And when I say he doesn't have his command early on, that's an understatement. It was awful. He was not finding the strike zone and missing by a considerable margin early on. So in that first inning, Julio Rodriguez draws a walk, runner on first base can't remember if France got on by walk or by single. I'm going to look that up because it is, I guess, fairly important. You, you get on, you get on. But I, I, out of my own curiosity here, I'm going to take a look. Um, so, yeah. Uh, wasn't this great that I just, yeah, France walked. Yeah, I thought he did. So, runners, two runners on. A. Eugenio Suarez laces a single into right field. Rodriguez scores fairly easily. Ty France, bless his heart, after a ball goes back the, past the third baseman, decides to attempt to run and gets thrown out by a good 10 feet. It's not close. Not a close play at all. And I thought that was a huge play in this game. Look, they had plenty of more chances throughout this game. They had lots of base runners because Otani's command was bad throughout. But that out really put them in a bad situation you don't want to make the first it's baseball cliches can be pretty stupid sometimes like unwritten rules but some of them make sense and one of them is you don't want to make the first out at home and it took what could have been a massive inning for seattle and turned it into just one run and it's worth pointing out that cal rally and teoscar hernandez came up and struck out swinging and I don't have a lot of confidence in Colton Wong getting the job done either. But it just changed everything. Instead of bases loaded, or excuse me, second and third and no out, you have a completely different situation. And I I know that many actors didn't wave him in. <laughs> I, I jokingly said to my buddy that they should have just tackled dude. Because there was no chance he was going to make it. Zero. Ty France does a lot of things well. Run is not one of them. There's a reason why everybody was giving the borderline Bronx cheer when he stole that base. 
it's because he's never done it before. He is a slow baseball player who can outrun me and outrun a lot of people, but he's not running outrunning very many baseball players. He's in the sixth percentile, I believe, last year in sprint speed, and he's going to be right around there again this year. He's slow. And he took away, unfortunately, I think the chance for a very big inning. They had other chances, but I think that was a massive play. Um, Otani was great after that, though, especially after the third inning, because he definitely issued a plan at walks. The Mariners just could not come up with that big hit. They just could not do it. And some of that, you got to give credit for Otani, because he was much better with the runners on, especially after, actually after that first inning. Uh, in terms of handling runners on. But from the fourth to the sixth, the Mariners had no shot. No shot. Kelmick gets to single, grounds into a double play. Um, in the fifth inning, he dominated him. In the sixth inning, he dominated. He struck out the side, actually, to end that inning, striking out Hernandez, Wong, and Pollock. I mean, he's really good. And this is kind of a it-is-what-it-is type of game. You're going to lose baseball games, and you're going to lose an awful lot of them when Shohei Otani is pitching. He's great. He's the best player in baseball. The best player in baseball, in my personal opinion. In fact, I'll go so far as to say Shohei Otani has the chance to be the greatest baseball player of all time. If he can continue to pitch and continue to hit at this level. No guarantees, obviously. But there's we've never seen anything like this in the modern era. But that's also what makes that first inning so frustrating because you, <laughs> to quote my good friend, Denny Green, you had him on the hook. You did have a chance for this massive inning. And yeah, got to blame Rally and blame T. Oscar Hernandez for not getting hits after. But making that first out at home was just real frustrating for me. Real frustrating. I also wanted to, to make... Uh, I saw some people on on the Twitter, which is, you know, a place uh, criticizing the decision to bring in Munoz in the seventh inning. I loved it. Loved it. That was the biggest situation in the game. It was a 2-1 game. You put in your best reliever to face the best two hitters. And unfortunately, he got babbipped. Batting average balls and played to death. Weak little ground ball to shortstop that Trout beat out because he was sprinting his you-know-what off. And then Otani does a great job with a little piece of hitting to knock the ball to third base with the Mariners playing in their shift. By the way, stop saying the shift is banned. It should be blatantly obvious to you by now that the shift is not banned. Limited, but not banned. No. Not even close, really. It's just you can't have your second baseman playing second right fielder but it's not banned look at where shortstops are playing that is not banned but yeah it ended up screwing the mariners but Munoz pitched fine it wasn't his fault whatsoever both of those are just little bleeding ground balls and i will say this i'm not trusting diego castillo in a high lever situation anytime soon right now no he uh he's looked bad had real issues with command, gave up the home run as well in that first appearance to Andres Jimenez. Smidgen worried there. Um, just because pitchers have a shelf life and Diego Castillo's been around a little while. He's not looked good in these first few appearances. Luckily, they're not really relying on him to be a high leverage guy. You have Seawald, you have Andres Munoz. Um, you have Matt Brash. You have Penn Murphy, who I thought looked great again today. Slider is sweeping as much as it can sweep. Trevor Gott did a very nice job. But man, you just, you had a real opportunity in the first inning to make things real difficult. You couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. And they blew some other chances as well in this outing as well. They had some chances to make this a, a much higher score then they ended up getting nice to see they fought till the end, but too little too late. And that's disappointing. And it's also why that loss on whatever the hell day it was Monday is frustrating because it meant you had to beat Shohei Otani to win the series. 
and you didn't. You didn't. You had a a mismatch at pitcher, which ended up not being too big of a mismatch because Flexen pitched well. But you put yourself in a hole. And you had a chance for a really dig out of that hole in that first inning, and they couldn't do it, and that's really frustrating. So that ends the homestand, and that is unacceptable is probably too strong a word. It won't be acceptable for very long. You can't go two and five very often. Just a major bummer. Major bummer to come out like that because I think everyone was so excited for these first seven games. We saw great crowds for the most part. Can't blame anybody for not wanting to go to Seattle at 7 o'clock at night in a 40-degree day on a Monday. But the other crowds I thought were pretty good. Today's crowd seemed fine. And I won't crowd shame anybody. Not in this, not in this economy <laughs> or any other economy. Spend your money the way you want to spend it. But uh, it was disappointing that those crowds were given mediocre at best baseball. So now you head to Cleveland and then you go to Chicago. Be really nice to win those series, at least one of them, you know. Not not necessary. Like if if you go two and four in this series or how many other games you play, it's not the end of the world. But I'd like to see this team play well for two consecutive games. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Haven't done that yet. 155 more chances to do so. So, yeah, please hit like, please hit subscribe. Uh, real quick, uh, I'm going to promote my Patreon. Uh, I haven't done that, and I should have been because I'm proud of the work, and I think it's pretty cool. Uh, Patreon.com slash MLB Prospect Guides. Please check it out. Um, I'm doing daily updates on minor league games. We're actually having more games now. It's just been AAA here for a little bit, but now we get to see – some of the intriguing double A, low A, high A players start to play, and I think it's really fun. So please do that. Helping me out an awful lot. Subscribing to this also helps, even though I, again, understand that we're not going to get to that thousand that's necessary to monetize for a little while. But uh, tell your friends, if you if you think this doesn't suck, that's as high a compliment as I can take, is it doesn't suck. Put that on the Chris Crawford poster. It doesn't suck. But yeah, patreon.com slash MLB MLB prospect guides. I think I have that right. I'll link it in the little bio thing. Yeah, kind of a bummer because you had a real opportunity here to get a really good win and beat a really good pitcher, but just came up short. Hopefully it doesn't happen anytime soon. Any, what a horrible way to end this video. I should have just hit the end button. I don't even know what the hell I just said. Go, Mariner.